Welcome to Chatting the Pictures. My name is Kara Finnegan, and I'm a writer, teacher, and historian of photography. And I'm Michael Shaw. I'm a writer, a psychologist, and also publisher of Reading the Pictures. America's final exit from Afghanistan was almost as troubled and controversial as the war itself. But you would never know it based on this highly poetic and effective parting image produced and circulated by the U.S. military. This photo shows U.S. Army Major General Chris Donahue stepping on board a transport plane at the Kabul airport as the last U.S. soldier to leave Afghanistan. This photograph almost immediately became the image of the withdrawal. And that's both understandable and also problematic because it would appear to reduce 20 years of U.S. presence to one man, one gun. Yeah, it's really the final example for me of how the military has overachieved in Afghanistan with its public relations. The photograph manages to create both a sense of poetry and nostalgia. So yes, it reduces 20 years down to one image, but in some ways it also resets the focus from two weeks to 20 years. There are a couple of things about this photo that are striking in ways that actually make it very 2021 in nature. The green color of being made at night, it's haunting, it's fuzzy. There's almost a kind of first-person shooter video game quality to this image, which makes it, in many ways, read as very contemporary. At the same time, the idea of using night vision technology brings with the connotations of the clandestine operation, spying, sneaking around in the dark. There's this very ambivalent visual nature to this image. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to read that night vision. Another angle is how much it emphasizes vision and being able to see in the dark. And again, there's a really ironic metaphor, being able to see the light through what has been this catastrophic war that we really never saw very clearly the whole time. And this is an image full of a lot of them that you can read out. Metaphors, as you said, of vision, metaphors of leaving. One metaphor I see playing out here is the turning of your back. So Donahue is literally turning his back on Afghanistan to board this transport. I'm also interested in what is behind him in this image. There was a lot of news coverage about what equipment was being left behind to enable future operations at the airport, for example. So you also get the sense that the lights are still on, people are home, the equipment is still there. And so what is being left behind actually appears relatively orderly, despite the sort of clandestine night vision, haunting green nature of this image. Yeah, and I really like the way that you're honing in on Donahue and all the dynamics. It gives the sense of personalization when the war became so anonymous. And then also the idea of closure just completely defies reality. It's as if we're a concluding war when in fact we're really just escaping one. And then I also thought that there was some contrast between this photograph and certainly some much less mythic images we saw this week, including the transfer ceremony at Dover Air Force Base with the return of the coffins of the 13 soldiers that were killed at the Kabul airport. And then another image is the photograph that the Russians published in February of 1989. It's really not a new idea, this sign-off image. It's interesting that you talked about the figure of Donahue himself, because he does represent, in a lot of ways, this longest war. His whole career has been associated with Afghanistan in some ways. There's another portrait, and it really is a portrait that was made of him at roughly the same time, also with the night vision, so that haunting green aspect. And it is a formal portrait that really looked to me as if it was intended to evoke almost the formal Civil War era portraits. It's very formal looking, it's posed. These were images where the soldier would pose with their weapons of war and in their uniform. Form. And the very formal, almost stoic nature of Donahue in that image really also, I think, amplifies what you're saying about the idea that this is really personalizing and individualizing what was, in fact, a very complex conflict. 